A warm welcome to this follow-on video. I've just talked about my experience using the yellow card scheme. Now, in the United States, you have an equivalent. It's called the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, the, the, the VERAS system. So these should work in much the same way. And we looked on the previous video about the yellow card scheme and found, yes, any member of the public can use it. And yes, it works and it's fairly easy to use. So let's look at some of this data now from these uh, from government sites. Now, um, I often get challenged for using government sites um, because people often are suspect about the quality of the data there. But, but I'm satisfied that this does reflect the yellow card data. The problem is that yellow card data is underreported. It only reports about 10% of serious side effects and 2 to 4% of more minor side effects. So it's not reporting them all. But let's go as far as we're allowed to go uh, on, this, on this report. So that's the website there. As of the 23rd of November 2022, so this is as up to date as we've got at the moment. Pfizer BioNTech monovalent uh, and bivalent vaccine. So both of the Pfizer vaccines. Uh, 177,925 yellow cards have been reported. So um, I think we can say that the actual number of uh, report worthy events is not less than that and could be significantly more than that. AstraZeneca, um, 246,866 adverse events have been reported. Uh, Moderna, uh, 47,045. We've given less Moderna jabs in the UK, of course. Novavax, uh, which I don't think we use, we haven't used much of that, 52. Uh, and brands um, not reported, or when the brand is not specified, 2,130 reports. That gives us a total of yellow card reports. These are people that have actually gone to the bother, or doctors that have actually gone to the bother of reporting. 474,018 reports on the yellow card scheme. Pretty high number. Overall reporting rate, according to the site, uh, around two to five yellow cards per thousand doses administered of vaccine. But as we've said, these are underreported. In the last 28 days, that's not the last 28 days, that's the 28, the, the 28 days leading up to that up to the 23rd of November for where data is available. Uh, in the 28 days, there was an extra 2,499 reports of Pfizer-BioNTech on the yellow card scheme. Uh, AstraZeneca, another 228, although presumably these were from some time in the past. Moderna, 1,099. Novavax, 15. Brand not specified, an extra 154 monthly. Uh, so these these are reports over a 28-day uh period again fairly high uh, levels of um, reporting i would have thought and uh this site here is the yellow card please help to reverse the decline in reporting if you suspect adverse reactions so i like to give evidence where we can and uh, this talks about it quite a bit and then if we go down here don't wait for someone else to report it it's estimated that only 10 percent of serious reactions and 2 to 4% of non-serious reactions are reported. So we, as members of the public, need to report if we consider it's possible. And if more and more people report, that starts to build up a, a pattern and a trend, and then you can get a, a safety signal emerging from that. One report, of course, means nothing, but if, if many, many people are reporting the same thing, then that starts to become uh, evidence. That should be uh, considered taken into account you would hope for all covid vaccines so sore arms are a common uh, side effect of course but as we well know a local side effect um not too concerning really that's normally self-resolving it's the systemic ones that are more uh, more concerning a uh, flu-like illness so uh, common reports are headaches chills fatigue nausea fever dizziness weakness aching muscle uh, aching muscles and rapid heartbeat tachycardia. More on the heart in a minute. Uh, they may be reported more frequently in young adults. So side effects more reported more in young adults, of who, of course, are at a much lower risk from severe COVID-19. Uh, from the government side, overall, our advice remains that the benefits of the vaccine outweigh the risks in the majority of people. 
what kind of language is this for a government website? The whole point about medicine is it should be individualised to the individual. I don't want to know what works for the majority of people. I want to know what works for me <laughs> or you. Or if you're my patient, I want to know what works for you. Very, uh, very disappointing language to see that in an official government report. Uh, the benefit of the vaccines in preventing COVID-19 and serious complications associated with COVID-19 far outweigh current no side effects in the majority of uh, patients. I guess it means it doesn't in the minority, so um, why aren't we giving much more individualised care? Assess, plan, implement, evaluate on the individual. And as we said, that's the uh, the point, the bit that reports uh, the... Uh, the under-reporting is officially recognised by the government. Uh, even though they know it's under-reported, they don't seem to really take that into um, account in their uh, estimates. So serious under-reporting. Now, um, Google YouTube guidelines, just so you know, a reminder of what's going on here. Now, these haven't changed. And uh, the YouTube guideline here written in comic uh, sans script, um, claims that an approved COVID-19 vaccine will cause death, infertility, miscarriage, autism or uh, contraction of another infectious disease. I'm not allowed to say any of those. So I'm going to uh, stop reporting on that particular paper at this point because I want to follow, I have to follow YouTube guidelines. Um Leave, leave that there. Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to carry on with that because I don't want to breach YouTube uh, guidelines. But if we do move on to another um, an another section here, this is section 4.4. Four. I think this is from this uh, government paper uh, here. Um, yeah, I think this one is related to... Um, where are we? This is related to uh, the Moderna. So let's have a look at that one um of course the, the M, i'm not picking moderna out the mrna vaccines both have a very uh, similar profile as we know um so hypersensitivity and anaphylaxis now this doesn't surprise me um anaphylaxis is uh, severe uh, severe allergic shock um it's a well-known risk. Um, I used to give a separate lecture on anaphylaxis every time I taught vaccinations. And every time I taught intravenous therapy, I gave a separate lecture on anaphylaxis. It's a, it's an allergic reaction and it's immediately life-threatening, but normally it's managed very well with adrenaline, sometimes going on to give other drugs such as hydrocortisone or salbutamol or intravenous fluids. But it's well known about and it can be well managed as long as it's, as long as it's uh, spotted. Of course, you know that people can have allergic reactions to peanuts and all sorts of things. So that's not perhaps too surprising. Although they do specify close observation for at least 15 minutes is recommended following the vaccination, which makes perfect sense. I agree with that. Now, there is a bit here that's a bit concerning about myocarditis. And again, it's an official government report. This is, we are allowed to talk about, uh, side, uh, we're allowed to talk about, um, rare rare side effects we're allowed to talk about um so we're talking about myocarditis and pericarditis direct from the site there's an increase for uh, myocarditis and pericarditis following the vaccination with the moderna spike vax uh few days mostly within the first few days primarily these cases have occurred within the first 14 days more often after the second dose uh sometime uh, or after the third dose uh, more often in younger males. Uh, risk profile appears to be similar for the second and third dose. So young men, of course, are at very low risk of getting severe COVID. Um, so that's one of those cases where you'd certainly want to consider the risk benefit analysis. But this is a bit that concerned me here. Now, it's hard to say because I don't know what the previous website was like, but I think this might be a change. Do advise me if you uh, think I'm wrong. But um, this is a direct quote from the site. Available data suggests that the course of myocarditis and pericarditis following vaccination is not different from myocarditis 
or pericarditis in general. So let's just, just this, this is an important point. Available data suggests that the course of myocarditis and pericarditis following vaccination is not different from myocarditis or pericarditis in general from the government report. So this is my go-to medical textbook. Other textbooks are available, but this one is, is excellent. I have no vested interest in it, but Davidson's has been around for, well, that's the 21st edition. I think we're probably on the 22nd or 23rd. I've picked this because it's definitely pre-COVID. So remember, we're talking about uh, myocarditis or pericarditis in general to give to give uh, direct quotes of myocarditis or pericarditis uh, in general. So I'm going to read you a bit uh, from this. Um, the clinical picture. This is so. Th this is this is my uh, myocarditis. I'm going to put that on the. Uh, going to put that on the overhead one. Just a minute. Um, there we go. So we're reading from here. This is uh, myocarditis from uh, from Davidson's. Now, um, I'll just read you a couple of things on what it says. Remember, this is co this is pre-COVID. This is nothing to do with the vaccines. This is just myocarditis uh, in general. Inflammation of the myocardium, of course, as you well know. Um, now. Uh, the clinical picture ranges from a symptomless disorder sometimes recognised by the presence of an inappropriate tachycardia, so the heart beats fast when it's not supposed to, like when you're not exercising, or abnormal ECG, electrocardiogram, EKG, oh, to fulminant heart, heart failure. That means the heart just packs in altogether. So there's a whole range of symptoms. A clinical picture ranges from symptomless disorder to fulminant heart failure. And actually, um, uh, viral myocarditis... Is, is probably the most or certainly one of the most common indications for heart transplants because the, the heart, the, the myocardium can be uh, essentially destroyed by the viruses such as Coxsackie virus, for example. Reading on. In most patients, the disease is self-limiting and the immediate prognosis is excellent. However, death may occur due to ventricular arrhythmias or rapidly progressive heart failure. Myocarditis has been reported as a cause of sudden and unexpected deaths in young athletes. Remember, this is pre-COVID. This is talking about myocarditis in general. There is strong evidence that some forms of myocarditis may lead to chronic low-grade myocarditis. So it might not be an acute presentation, but it could be a chronic ongoing problem. Uh, or dilated cardiomyopathy. So myocarditis here can lead to uh, to, to um, can, can can lead to cardiomyopathy. Now cardiomyopathy is disease of the the heart muscle. Um, so the myocarditis can lead to cardiomyopathy, and that can lead to a dilated um, um, cardiopathy. So in other words, because the ventricles are no longer the muscles no longer working properly, they become dilated. So you get a, a dilated heart that's no longer working properly, as a result of the uh, as a result of the cardiomyopathy, as a result of the cardio, uh, as, as a result of the, the inflammation, the myocarditis. Um, in patients, uh, the, the patient frequently recovers from the acute infection, talking about viral myocarditis here, but goes on to develop a chronic dilated cardiomyopathy 10 or 20 years later. So that's talking about myocarditis from the classical uh, perspective of uh, one of the best known uh, medical textbooks uh, probably in the world actually so the reason I'm going through that is this actually says here um, this was the bit that was concerning available data suggests that the course of myocarditis and pericarditis following vaccination is not different from myocarditis or pericarditis in general and that was about it in general now healthcare professionals should be alert to signs and symptoms of myocarditis and pericarditis um, are we um, if you report a rapid heart rate to your gp will they say come round for an immediate examination will they refer you to a cardiologist immediately um, in in some situations in the uk at the moment that might be difficult uh, vaccinated individuals should be instructed to seek immediate medical attention 
So that normally means go to A&E medical attention, seek immediate medical attention. If they develop symptoms indicative of myocarditis or pericarditis, because the myocarditis can cause a, a tachyarrhythmia and a cardiac arrest. Um, not my words, direct from the government website. Direct from the website. Uh, such as acute or persistent chest pain, shortness of breath, palpitations following vaccination. Tells you what to look out for. Healthcare professionals should consult guidance uh, and or specialists to diagnose and treat this condition. So this could be kicked up stra- upstairs to the cardiologist straight away. So if this reports to a GP or to a um, A&E doctor, um, it should be um, referred to a specialist straight away, to the cardiologist's specialist. So it's a specialist diagnosis. And I can't think of who would diagnose that apart from a cardiologist. Um, That's what the guidelines say. Um, Is this always happening? Well, I've talked to a few people when it doesn't happen, to be quite honest. But that's what the government guidelines say. So there we go. That's what should be happening. Uh, Who can get a COVID vaccine? This is the NHS site here. Um, Now, having pointed out that there's this risk in young men, The government website says everyone aged five or over can get a first and second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. So that includes men who are 18, 19, 20, 21, 17. Because they they, they come under everyone, because that includes male and female. And they're aged over five. So having recognised this problem is more prevalent in um, younger males they still say that young men can be vaccinated with these self-same vaccines Um, some people might think that's contradictory Uh, people aged 16 and over and some children can also get a booster dose they're saying and uh what put me onto this hypertension thing was I looked around for some research and there's this hypertension after COVID-19 vaccination. And quite a lot of this research is being done in other countries. This one is done in Italy. So uh, some good research coming out of Italy and uh, Germany, for example. Not so much good research coming out of the United States and the United Kingdom. And uh, some of the research that's come out of Canada lately is uh, questionable, as you saw a couple of videos ago. So there we go. Um, Government admitting that young men are at greater risk, but also saying just just vaccinate them the same as everyone else. No problem. Um, Some might think this is appalling beyond description. Unethical. Some might think that. Dangerous. Reckless. Negligent. Some might think that. Thank you for watching.